So I decided to take a look at this Patsom de Badrakang from this new batch which I received. This is Long Rak Chat with some red ancient Chinese lacquer on it, some of which has been cleaned off. And I'm now going to put this lens on it to look at the Moon San at about 10 to 12 times macro. You can see the top knot pitching the, uh, piercing the arch, making this a pim gate talot sum. And here these komowat sum. You can see the crinkles, the wrinkles in the arch, the cracks, and this comes from where the aging as the wetness of the clay has dried. The contraction of the clay has caused these crackles in the arch and on the surface of the amulet. Here we can see black piece of pratad and white pieces of pratad. In the head of the Buddha you see a black shiny piece that could be a piece of uh, banana seed or bilan powders if you see small flecks of black. This black stuff with fine powder on is raktad, red lacquer, which normally uh, with authentic Somde Wadrakang from Wadrakang, not from a group. Uh, they didn't cover the whole amulet with lacquer, it was just the body mostly of the Buddha, which is why you see lacquer mostly on the body but not on the rest of the surface of the amulet. It could also have been cleaned somewhat. In this case, I think not. Uh, the very fine powder you see stuck to the top of the surface coming up, this very fine thin powder, is bang or blue akhoi. The white crystal is hin silati kun. You can see there in the chest is one of the elements of Moonsan to be present. The little red fleck are pieces of Prat Gamping Pet, Prat Gamping Pet, red clay amulets which Somdet to uh, broke up into the Moonsan, along with Blue Koi, which is white shell, shellfish shell powders which is part of very fine powder. So as the amulet dries and contracts, the bigger the powders with bigger particles push the finer particle powders up to the surface. And that's why you see that fine powder on the surface of the front face. So looking at the rear face, we can see some of the red lacquer. And we put the lens on again now to go in close and see how uh, tightly affixed the lacquer is and how where there is no lacquer we can see various elements. You can see these tiny flakes of bilan powders. You can see the cracks from contraction. You don't see many pieces of hinsilati kun on the rear face which were seen on the front face. There are no two pratsomdet the same. All, every Pratsomde amulet has its own idiosyncrasies. There we see some piece of Yin Silati Kun. You can see a few small pieces and little red flags. This is quite a smooth back face. You have different kinds of back faces depending on what they laid the amulets out to dry on. Some have lines on them, some are smooth. Some have lots of kind of holes in the back, depending on what surface they laid the amulets out to dry on. Be it a Mygadan board, a wooden board, you would see wood lines. Or smooth if it was laid on marble or stone. Here we see the edges. Apart from seeing the contents of Munsan, the red flags and so on, and the black flags, we can see the edges are not straight and flat, like a new amulet would be, rather look like rounded old stones like old megaliths yeah i like to think of you can see just how rounded and knobbly the edges are from the aging with the 150 160 170 200 year old amulet the edges of the somdet of the amulet should not be smooth as if they've just been taken out of the block press you can see here uh, this particular model, I would guess, 
because I haven't certificated it yet, but I bet you <laughs> it's a Pim Luang Wijan from the Chang Luang Wijan artisan who was the teacher of all the other Chang Luang, Chang Sip Mo of the royal artisans who made block presses for Pratsom Lip Badrakang. Chang Luang Wijan was the Kubajan of the other also preferred artisans, Chang Luang Siti Khan and Chang Luang Wijin. And there were other artisans. This uh, Chang Luang Wijan models are the most preferred, of course, because this block press artisan who made designs for block presses for some Lipa Buddhajanto from Rangsi of Wadrakang uh, was the Kubajan and his design is considered the most beautiful. You can see the arch on the right side actually touches the edge of the frame of the amulet, whereas on the left side there's a little bit more meat, as they say, or a bit more clay protruding from the edge of the arch. That's also a sign, if it's a Pim Lung Wijan, on the right-hand side of the front face, the amulet, the arch will meet the edge of the amulet about halfway down. <coughs> and so there you go, Pat Somni Badrakhan Lung Rak Chahad, from uh, designed by Chang Lung Wijan, Pim Gate Talutsum, piercing the arch, top knot piercing the arch. And in the next video I'll show of these 12 some dead I received in this patch, this will be the next one we'll be looking at, which is also a Pim Lung Chang Lung Wijan with no lacquer cleaned, which has a different look to it and will be interesting to examine. Sajan Spencer for Amulets TV and the Buddha Magic Project signing off. See you next time. <laughs>